Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, and this is my Agile Thought of the Day. Today, I'm coming to you from uh, my new treadmill desk, and I want to sort of talk to you about something that happened, which is exceedingly rare in, in test-driven development, and, and that is this idea of having a complete unit test, right? This is something that is so, so ridiculous, it's usually not strived for, and it's usually not valuable, but every once in a very great while, you come across something like you came across today where you can actually test something completely. And so here's the scenario that we hit. Uh, had, had a friend uh, in a class who had a tic-tac-toe player to make, right? So the idea here is that there's a tic-tac-toe board, it knows what it's doing, and it's gonna call your artificial intelligence and say, where should I play? So in this scenario, you're an X and you wanna play your X over here. All right, so very sort of simple scenario. And we just sort of want to test drive it. But the neat thing about this is that when you look at a tic-tac-toe board, each individual space sort of has three things that can be there. There could be an X there, there could be an O there, or it could be empty. And that means the number of possible tic-tac-toe boards is just slightly below 20,000, which is a fairly big number for human beings, but is not a big number for computers. So we're working into this finite number that is manageable situation, which again is just extremely rare. Think even just a function that takes an int sort of usually goes past a manageable number. Uh, but here we don't. So let's take a look at what it's like to test drive this for completeness. So first, before we even get sort of to the, to the first test, I want to start one level in because I think it's a little easier to understand. Right? And so the idea here is that I want some way to look at a board right, where we place next. Right? So here, um, you have those nine different places, so S1, and let's see here. We need nine different squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great, and we wanna make this method, and for right now, let's just ignore what it actually does and let's just return an empty string. Okay, so the thing is, this is sort of like testing each scenario. So this is sort of like a data-driven test. So now let's write the actual test for this. All right, so we're gonna test all spaces. And to do this, we're basically gonna use something from legacy code. Now with legacy code, um, this is not, sorry, legacy approvals. With legacy code, we don't try to go for completeness. You just try to go for a lot of stuff because you have no idea what's going on most of the time. But here, I can actually do a lockdown that's complete. So on this method, or on this object, I want to call place next, and I need to pass it the nine parameters, right? So space, space, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, and now let's look at this. What can happen as a parameter, right? Well, it turns out that a parameter can be one of three things. It could be an empty space, it could be an X, or it could be an O. All right, so now we have this very interesting situation. And let's run this just to sort of see where we're going. And you can see here, it's given me all these different tic-tac-toe boards. Now, we haven't done anything with them, but you can see there's 19,683 which if you remember is the total number of boards that we could have had. Now let's actually start doing something with it. Now that we have a test that will give us thoroughness, let's have it actually do something. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new tic-tac-toe board. And just for right now, I'm gonna put it on the new line and say board. So if I run this, whoosh, here we are with all the different boards, but it created a board but not actually doing anything with it. So now we have to place those pieces in the right place. So we're gonna say sort of board, place, and at zero, zero, what we have in space one. And then really we have sort of three of these, one, two, three, and then we have three of those. So these all go on the next row and the next row. 
And then we have to go down and do all nine of those. Great. So now if I run this, I should see the board that is asking the player to play. Good, and you can see that over here. But you'll notice that sometimes you get weird boards, right? Like, let's take a look here. Now yeah, those all look good. This isn't. Here I have four X's and two O's, right? Like that situation could just never happen. So I can make it so my player handles it, or I can just sort of say, hey, let's go and say, if uh, the board is legal, then I want to return this and otherwise just return illegal board. All right, so let's run that. Now I've sort of taken a subsection of all possible boards and sort of bypassing the ones that are now illegal. And then let's just go a little bit farther and say, you know, really the thing that's here is I need to take a new player and say move onto this board. So let's go and create that class. So now we have a player class. And now let's go and create that method. So now we have a move method on a board. And now let's actually do the move. Now there's lots of different things you could do here. I'm not going to do the correct thing. I'm going to do just I want to place my x on the first square that I can. Right? So to do that, uh, I want to do a query over the board. Right? So where and what do I want to do a where or? So on the board, I have a list of points, right? So let's go and take a look at all the points. And then I'm going to create this function on it. So let's do that. Uh, and this is a F1 of Boolean. So these are lambdas. Uh, and I'm going to say new F1, which is going to take a point, which I don't have right now. All right, and it is going to return uh, on the board, right? So we want to say board dot is empty uh, for the point A. And if it is, we want to return that. Now, the one thing I have to do is because the board is not in scope, I have to make that final and pass it in. All right, so now this where is going to give me all the points that are empty, but I don't actually care about all of them. I just want to get the first one and let's hold on to that and then let's go to our board and even though it's final I can still call things on it so I'm going to say uh, place on my point the string and normally I put a lowercase x here but I'm going to place a big x here because I want to make it a little bit easier to see now let's run this and we should be able to see that it is putting it in, in the first space possible so here it is first place possible, here it is, first place possible, first place possible, here it is, there's an empty space in between, it's putting it there. Great. Now, I don't want to take you through the rest of this. I just wanted to sort of t talk about this very, very uncommon situation where you actually have a finite number of inputs and with just, I think we have 30 lines of code here, right, for our test. 43 lines of code. You can test absolutely every possibility that exists. Thanks for taking this journey with me. Uh, we've actually walked a quarter of a mile.